Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for coming and joining us this evening for the learning of Torah Hashem Be'ezus Hashem Isbach as we broadcast here from our flagship station, the Agudas Yisrael of Be'ezev in Lakewood, New Jersey. And uh, we always begin with Akar Satayv to TorahAnytime.com for giving us a platform of teaching Torah in uh, 187 countries. And we thank Chazak for uh, promoting this year. We uh, have uh, a sponsor tonight, actually a sponsor and a partial sponsor. We're sponsored by the Gellis family. Uh, and this is L'Rafu Shalema for Chaim Elazar ben Rachel Leah and Moshe Chaim Yeshua ben Malka that they should have L'Rafu Shalema from Hashem B'Seich Shar Chayli Yisrael in the schuz of our learning. Amen. We're also sponsored uh, partially by Yitzi and Hadassah Becker uh, for the schuz of their children. They should grow up to in Ruchnius and Gashmius and get close to Hashem and closer to Hashem, Avigail, Shua, Shmuel Tzvi, Kalman, Esti, Menachem Aryeh, and Bracha, that they should have all kinds of Bracha. Um, if you would like to sponsor next week's share, 718 916 3100. 718 916 3100. R-M-M-W-S-I at AOL.com Today's share is uncharacteristically about one topic. The whole share is going to be about Birchus Kahanim. Now, in doing so, I am departing from my usual custom of touching on different areas in the parasha but when I started learning about the Birchus Kahanim, I found so many um, revealing uh, things that I decided to share it with the Eilam. Daber el Aaron vel Bonov, speak to Aaron and his children, Kaisavorchu es Bnei Yisrael. So shall you bless the Bnei Yisrael. So the question is, and it's really a very basic question. Why was the privilege of blessing Klal Yisrael given to the Kahanim? Why don't we gather Klal Yisrael and let them be blessed by the Gedele Yisrael? Right? At the time of Rabbi Moshe, we get together Rabbi Moshe, Rabbi Yaakov Kamenetsky, the Satmar Rebbe, the Blujava Rebbe, the close of the Rebbe and make a big blessing and let them bless Klal Yisrael. After all, we know that if a person has someone sick, it says, Yelech Eitzel Chacham. It doesn't say, Yelech Eitzel Koyim. It says, go to the Chacham. Why is it that this uh, privilege is vested in the Kohanim? So, Rav Aaron Vulcan the of Bezdin of Pinsk says he cites a Gemara in Saita of Lamed Chesamid Beis. The Gemara in Saita and Lamed Chesamid Beis says Amri Yeshua ben Levi, a nice nin kaisel bracha. When we give the kais of benching, we give it el letoiv ayin to someone who has a generous eye. Shenemar toiv ayin hu yevayrech. Now, literally, this pasuk means that someone who is generous will be blessed. But the Gemara says, "Al tikra yevayrech." Don't le- re- read it that he will be blessed. Eli yevayrech. He is the one sh- that should give blessing. And the Masha explains Masha and Saita, uh, the Pirish on the Agadat sections of Shas, the go-to Pirish. The Masha says because somebody who is generous, will give the best blessings. So he says the Kahanim also, since the Kahanim didn't have a chalik in the land, so they didn't have their own uh, fields, they didn't have their own gardens, they didn't have their own orchards, 
nor did they work because they served in the Beis HaMikdash. And they, they therefore relied on the stipend that they got from everyone. They were the benefactors from everyone. They, they, they got the Trumas, the Maestras, the Zoya al Chayayim Vakeva, the Reish Sagez, the first of the fleece. And therefore, they have an extremely vested interest that everybody should succeed. Everybody should be successful. Therefore, they're the ones that give the blessing. And we might add that it could be that nowadays also, since everybody treats them respectfully, since we have a mitzvah daraisa of the kidashtoi to give them the first taliyah, right? It could be in a big shul that has one kain, each person would get an aliyah only once or twice a year, but he gets an aliyah every week. Right? There's a dinner of a kidashtoi. And we give him benching, we give him the first portion, right? So it could be he, because he's appreciative, he's going to bless us with a generous eye, and in, indeed, the it says, "Asher kitchanu b'mitzvayis of its ivanu lavorich es amo Yisrael biava," that the bracha should be given with love, with appreciation. Right, the kahanim they got their their livelihood from people, the truma, the maisrus, the uh, the excuse me, the truma, the trumas maiser, the the. Reishis Agez, the Bikurim, therefore they blessed with love. By the way, there's an interesting Toldus Aaron. The Toldus Aaron says that we know that there are 15 words in Birchus Kahanim. Yivarecha Hashem, Yishmarecha, Ya Hashem, Panavelecha, Vichunecha, Yisa Hashem, Panavelecha, Vyaseim Lecha Shalom is 15 words. That's the gematria of Ba'ahava. Ava is 13, B'Ava is 15. Now, by the way, this dynamic is true also by Kibbut Ava'ein. It says, Kabed HaSavicha Ve'esimecha Leman Yarichun Yamecha Honor your father and mother, Leman Yarichun Yamecha so the Paneach Raza, who's one of the Rishonim, says it should say Leman Yarichu Yamecha. Why does it say Leman Yarichun with a Nun? And uh, Paneach Raza says because if you treat your father and mother properly, they will cause your life to be longer. Why? Because they'll pray for you. If you treat them nicely, and you treat them well as they get older, they're going to want, anyway, a parent prays for a child. But now when you treat them properly, they'll really pray, please, he should be healthy, she should be healthy. Well, we need them. And that, when a person has a vested interest, it makes for more of, of a successful prayer. I've said many times, that one of the things that should be taught in every Shalom Bayesh year is that husband and wife should pray for their spouse every day. In Rafa'inu, you should pray that your spouse should be healthy, should have no health worries. In Rafa'inu, you should pray that your spouse shouldn't start getting rheumatism. In Rafa'inu, you should pray that your spouse should not. Uh, become forgetful or worse in, in Shema Kaleinu you should pray that your spouse that his or her wishes should happen and dreams should be fulfilled in Sim Shalom you should pray that your spouse should have peace of mind it's very important now if you treat your spice, spouse nicely then when they pray, they're going to pray with great fervor. So that's a very big thing. Now it says, Daber el Aaron bel Bonov. Speak to Aaron and his children. So it's interesting. There's a famous Gemara in Chulin, and Av Tzadik Aleph. The Gemara says, Chavivin Yisrael, Precious are the Bnei Yisrael, 
precious are the Jews, Shemaskirin es Hashem achar beis tevis, that they mention Hashem after two words, Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu. So we get to, to say Hashem after just two words. We're more than the Malachim. Because the Malachim only get to say Hashem after three words. Kadosh, 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 Hashem Tzvakais. So the Malachim only get to say after three words. Chaviv in Yisrael, that we get to say Hashem after two words. And by the way, why are we more precious than the angels? You could argue, what are you talking about? The angels, they never sin. They never sin. They are completely holy. That when they daven, they're never distracted. The angel never looks at his cell phone. The angel never thinks about what he's going to eat or what he's going to do over the weekend. How can it be that the tefillah of a human should be more desirous to Hashem than the prayer of an angel? And the answer is simple. Because we choose to daven. We could sleep late and miss davening. We could decide that we can't miss this deal and instead of davening mincha, we'll daven two maribs, which you're not supposed to do because if you willfully uh, miss it, it's not so simple that you could do that. But that's what if you remember, there's a very strange Rashi. Uh, I shouldn't say nothing about Rashi is strange, but very, very mysterious Rashi. When the Malach asked Yaakov to let him go, and the Malach says, it's Allah Shachar, it's already morning. And Rashi tells us, V'tzorich ani loymer shira. And I need to say so. Now that's a difficult Rashi. Because if your child tells you, I have to bench, you would be right in correcting your child. Don't say you have to bench. Say that you want to bench. You know, if you're going to say that I have to wish my wife a happy birthday, that's a big mistake. You want to wish your wife a happy birthday. Better not say you have to wish. Mm -hmm. That sounds like it's a burden. And yet Rashi says about the Malach, and Rashi is highlighting something. A Malach has to. We choose to. That's why we get to mention Hashem's name after two words. What? earlier than the Malach, after three words. And by the way, that explains what we say in Musif, in Kedusha. What do we say? We say, Mim hu yifen berachem of l'amai. From his place, he should turn with mercy to his nation. V'yochayin am, and he should be gracious to his nation, Hamayachadim Shemai that declares him one. Erev Avaker in the evening and the morning, Bechol Yom Tamid, every day without fail, right? Because it's 356 days a year. Pamayim Be'ava Shema Aimran. See that word? Twice a day with love we say Shema. This is how we transcend the angels. Because we choose to do it. Angel can't do it with love. Because that means that he's making a choice. Rashi says, angels, Sarachani, this is how we transcend the angels. By the way, this is a new idea. Somebody says, so how do you say Kriyashma? You say, I, I say it with Kavana. Very good. But there's another element besides saying it with Kavana. And that is, I say it with love. I want to say it. I want to declare Hashem as the one and only. I want to declare him as my boss. Now I want to point out here something. Somebody is listening to this and says, I don't understand. What do you mean that the angels only say Hashem after three words? 
they say Hashem after two words because they say Baruch Kvayit Hashem Im Kaimai. And then they say Hashem after one word, Yim Loich Hashem Laila. And the answer to that is, is that it goes at the start. We at the start say Shema Yisrael Hashem, two words. They at the start say Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh Hashem. They say three words at the start. Comes along the Sefer Ner Lameya, and the Sefer Ner Lameya says the Kahanim Amor. They say Hashem after one word. Yoyer, what is it? What do they say? Yevarech Hashem. So they say Hashem after one word. That's because the Kahanim, they are closer to Hashem. They don't go to work. The Kahanim are servicing Hashem the whole day. The Kahanim, they can't choose to go to any funeral because that will render them tome and out of Hashem's work. Right? So they can't go, they can't, they can't go to a funeral. Uh, there is another interesting reason that they bring down that a Kayin can't become Tame because a Kayin had a glow of holiness and we don't want people to think that they that they're in communication with the dead and that's why they have this otherworldly glow so therefore we don't allow, allow them to become Tame so the Kayin could mention Hashem even after one, one word Yevarechecha Hashem v'yishmerecha. V'samu eshmi al b'nei Yisrael. Place my name on the b'nei Yisrael. V'ani avarechem. And I will bless them. The Yeshalmi says that one of the things that the Kehanim should do when they duchen is they do bekel rum. However, the Yeshalmi then says, you know what it means? Bikal Ram, Bikailai Shal Ram, with the voice of the one of high. And listen to the Lashon of Yerushalmi. Milame Cha Kodish Baruchu Mishtama Kailai Imohem. Hashem causes his voice to be heard together with the Kanim. So when we hear Yavarech Hashem Yishmarecha, it's intermingled with the voice of Hashem. Listen to this medrash in Bracious Rabbi. This is a medrash. Listen to this medrash. It says in Bracious Rabbi, Bishosha Amar Akarish Barakhullah Aaron Uvonov. When Hashem said to Aaron and his children, Levorech Yisrael, that they should be vested with blessing Yisrael. So when they did that, when Hashem told them that, the Bnei Yisrael complained. Amru Bnei Yisrael ain't on a roitzim ella me'imach. Hashem, we only want to be blessed from you. After all, it says in the Torah, Ashkifa mi ma'oyim kotshecha, look down from your holy abode, min ha'shamayim ovarech esamcha Yisrael. So he said, we, we want to be blessed from you. Amru lehem ha'kodesh baruch hu, that's why they have their backs to the Aron Kodesh. Because Hashem is in back of them. And I'm standing with them and I'm blessing you with them. And that's what it means in the Pasuk. This is a famous Pasuk. He looks through the windows. He peers through the cracks. So the Medrash said, the Medrash. Chaloinus means mibain kaspeyem. Hashem says, I'm talking from over their shoulders. Minacharakim mibain etzboiseyem. I'm coming through their fingers. When they separate their fingers in duchening, I'm coming through their fingers. You know, many will remember the historical visit of Rav Steinman to Eretz Yisrael. Of course, Rav Steinman was the one of the G'dayle Adar of the Litvish Island. But when Rav Steinman came to New York, he made a very interesting decision. After davening, 
in big shuls and in big litvish yeshivas, every day he went to a Svardi shul to hear Birchus Kahana. He didn't want to miss ever a day Birchus Kahana. And Rav Steinman said that since Har Sinai, we never hear from Hashem. He says, even the Nevi'im, they didn't hear directly from Hashem except from Moshe Rabbeinu. But he said, still we could hear from Hashem by Birchus Khan. That's what it says. Hashem says, I'm talking with them. Listen to this Rambam, which is brought down by the Mishnah Brewer. If you want to look at the Mishnah Brewer, in Hilchus Birchus Kahanim, it's really, it's really, it's really amazing. It's in Simon Kuf Chav Ches, Sif Cotton Kuf Mem Vav. The Al Titama the Don't be amazed and say, Ma Toyel Birchus Head Yitzeh. Well, I hear there's a Kayin who works in the laundromat, and he's getting up and he's giving everybody a bracha. Say, who's this? He doesn't learn. He doesn't. Who's this guy in that he's giving a bracha? Says the Rambam. Says the Mishnah Brura. She ain't kibul bracha toli b'kahanim. It's not the kahanim. El ba'kodesh baruchu. She never. It says v'samu eshmi al bnei Yisrael v'ani avorechem, and I'll bless them. Rav Steinman really promoted this. Rav Steinman said that it was an amazement to him. It was a pellet to him that people travel to great distances to get a bracha. People go travel far to Uman, to Keristir, to Davan by a kever. And they don't realize that if they pay attention by Birchus Kahanim, they're getting a bracha straight from Hashem. There's also a, 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 a wonderful story from the Briskarov. The Briskarov was davening in a minion. It was a, a, a large minion. And they realized that they didn't have a kayin to duchen. So he stopped the davening and he sent people to Zichra and Moshe in order to get kayin. Now imagine, you stop the davening. The chazan is davening most of it. It was just a long davening with halal and laning and, and maybe there was a drasha. And now, by most of, all of a sudden, everything stops. People, people have ants in their pants. Right? And you heard somebody say, by the way, you know this, that nobody says, I want to go home and eat. Nobody will do that. They'll say it's tircha de tzibura. You know, very, the Yetzirah always dresses things up in frumma ways. I'm, I'm, I'm not concerned about myself. I'll stay in all day. But Tircha de Tzibura! So the Briskarov said, I don't understand. People wait for a tzaddik's bracha. And they stand outside in lines and wait. And here the Rabbeinu Shalom is going to give a bracha himself, and you say, Tircha de Tzibura? That, that's... The great Rabbi Shimshim Pinkus, Zech Tzadik Levracha, says over that he had a friend that was sick. And he had a lot of kavana to pray for this friend during Berchus Kahanim, and the friend had a Yeshua. Also in Kol Barama, and this, 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 I could tell you other ma'isim, but I'll tell you one ma'isim <coughs> that cited, cited in Kol Barama that uh, there was somebody whose daughter was not getting married and she was getting older and older and, uh, and, and the daughter was not getting married and uh, he was told that he should go to one of the Kayanim, actually, he was told, the way they reported, he was told to go to three Kayanim and ask them that when they duchen, they should have in mind special that the daughter should find a Shidduch. 
and was also told that it's proper to give the Kayin some money. Because, you know, money greases the Kavana. You know, that's the way it is. We are very money-driven people. I don't mean that to sound cynical, but we are very money-driven people. And he did it, and one of the Kayin's wives, shortly afterwards, made the Shidduch for the daughter. There's a very big power. I also, I, I, this is my own vote. If you don't like it, you could forget it. But isn't it interesting that Shiduchin and Sheyidochin are the same letters? Isn't that interesting? Shiduchin and Sheyidochin are the same letters. Um, so, I'll tell you one more thing. I'll tell you one th more things. The Birchus uh, Kahanim is written right next to the Mishkin, right? It says, first it says the Birchus Kahanim, and then it says, So why are they put next to each other? So there's a very interesting Medrash in Bamid Meraba. Amr of Yeshua the Sichnen B'Shem Reb Levi. What is this to be compared to? The king made a big vote for his daughter. Big engagement party. And of course, the king's engagement party uh, was, uh, was replete with all kinds of hot dishes and remarkable cakes and all kinds of flower arrangements, and all kinds of music. And she got an ayin hara. Who knows what happened? Maybe she broke a leg. It doesn't say in the medrash. She got an ayin hara. So, and, and I, I think that this medrash might have mentioned this also to let us know that a vert could be very dangerous. Don't go too extravagant. What are you doing? You want an ayin hara? Oh, you should see that vote. It was like a wedding. The only thing that was missing by the vote is the chuppah. Otherwise, it was like a wedding. What are you doing? You want people to be envious? Very dangerous. So what did the king do? When it came to the chasana, he got a kameya. He got an amulet from a great man so that she shouldn't get an ayin hara. So, says, says the Medrash, this is a Medrash. Sa HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave the Torah Bafumbi in front of three million people and there was an Ayin Har and the Luchas got broken. So, before he gave the Mishkin, he, he let instituted Birchus Kahana that the Bracha should protect from an Ayin Har. Bracha should protect from an evil eye. So it says that one of the strongest things against eye and horror is to have kavana in Bechus Kahana. It's interesting, you'll say, eye and horror, what's an eye and horror? Eye and horror is a reality. It says in the Gemara, the Heisir Hashem Mimcha Kol Chayli. I will remove from you all sickness. And it says, Kalchali refers to Ayin Har. First to Ayin Har. It says, Rav was able to go to a cemetery and look at the graves and know why a person died. And it's a Gemara above Metziah. Gemara says he studied 100 graves and he said 99 died for my inhara, and one for natural purposes. Not for natural reasons. It says in Pirkei Avos, Ayinhara in Adam in Now, this doesn't mean that a person should go around all the time, Ayinhara, Ayinhara, Ayinhara. That's not what it means. It means we shouldn't flaunt things that Hashem gives us extra and cause other people pain. It means to develop a sensitivity 
it's a, it's a tightrope. You know, I, I, I had a very close friend that was childless for many years, Baruch Hashem. He has a lot of children now. But he told me the hardest day of the year for him and his wife was Simchas Torah. Came to shul, everybody had their children on their shoulders. Everybody was dancing with their children with flags. And everybody was giving out candy, and, and they were without children. We have to develop a sensitivity to be careful. Here's a person, they can't afford a car. They don't have a car. They're always going on buses and trains, and they have to mooch rides. Don't go over to them and say, you want to kick the tires of my new car? Want to smell the leather? Don't do that. This, here's a person who uh, they have three daughters in their 30s without Shaduchin. Don't go over to them and say, you know, my daughter is so happy. Could I tell you how he proposed? You gotta be careful, you gotta be sensitive. Because otherwise, the Rabbani Shalom said, I didn't give you this to cause other people pain. I want to tell you a very interesting story. Because some people say, I in her, uh, only if you worry about it, then it's a problem. You shouldn't worry about it. I in her is given to worry about it. I'll tell you an interesting story. When I published my first Sefer, this is already now many years ago, if, many years ago, when I published my first Sefer, Passionate Judaism, by the way, I still have copies. If you don't have my Passionate Judaism, you could order a copy. I still have hard, hardcover copies of Passionate Judaism. It's a great Sefer. Put a lot of work into it. I, 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 it was before all my children got married. It's a long time ago. But, um, so, the, the um, publisher of Passion Judaism was my good friend Arye Meze in Judea Judaica Press. And he wanted to make a big splash with the Sefer, so he bought the cover of the country Yossi. At that time, my good friend Yossi Tov had a popular magazine, Country Yossi, and the cover of the Country Yossi was a hush of a thing. Uh, it, it's it sold for uh, thousands of dollars, and he bought the cover of Country Yossi, and uh, he put on the cover the safer and a picture of me, and I proudly came home to my first Rebbe in Allah Shalom, and showed her the cover, and I'll never forget she turned white. And she said, you're kidding me, right? And I, I, I still didn't realize, what, what do you mean? I was thinking maybe she didn't like my picture, it wasn't nice. She said, you realize that those magazines are on the floors of the barbers and the beauty parlors and the pizza shops. Do you want to get such an i and are you kidding? There's no way. So, okay, my wife didn't want it. I was very surprised. But I called up Arya Meze and I said, you know, we can't use this. <laughs> he said, Rabbi Weiss, I paid thousands of dollars for this cover. Arya Meze, for those that know him, is a very ehrlich person. I said to him, I, I don't know what to tell you, but I can't do it if my wife is, is afraid. So Aryeh said, look, my Pesach is Rav David Feinstein. And of course I know you, you're a Staten Island boy, you're older than Rav David. So let's ask Rav David what to do. So I went back to my Rebetzin in Libby, Allah Shalom. And I told her, so she said, look, I can't tell you not to ask a Shaila, 
but make sure you tell R- R- the Rosh Shiva of David that his wife is afraid of an ayin hara. So Arya went and called Rav David, and Rav, Arya was sure that Rav David was going to say, "Ah, don't worry about it." That's not what Rav David said. He said, "The Rebbitzin Weiss is afraid of an ayin hara." He said, "Well, if she's afraid, then you can't use it." So Baruch Hashem, already then I had time to think. And I came up with an alternate cover. I said, take my picture out and put in a picture of Rav Moshe. And say from Rebbe to Talmud. And that's what they did. And it was Shomal Yisrael, it was a big... But I'm just showing you how Ayin Hara, it's a, it's, it's a very real thing. This happened another time that, as, I, as, I, as many of you know, there was a time that I gave for many years at Dafyemi in the Aguda of 14th Avenue, later on in the Aguda of the Svara Shishul, and I had 250 people by the Shir. And again, my Rebbitzin was a little nervous that here I was a young guy, and it was well popular, 250, she was worried about a Ayanara. So, I went with her to Reb Shloim Mebabov, the Heiliger Reb Shloim Mebabov, and to get a bracha. And he, I remember in his most, you know, the Baba the Rebbe was the Noim Sheber Rebbe's, the sweetest of the Rebbe's. I shouldn't say, I don't know, but he was so sweet. And he smiled at us. We went to his house and he said, you don't have to worry Shaymer mitzvah lo yada davara. Somebody that does a mitzvah doesn't have to worry about ra. And he also said, Mitzvah Sashem bara meira seinayim. It illuminates the eye. And by the way, this is why, this is why there's no danger in being honored by a shul dinner or by a yeshiva dinner. A lot of people, they, they try to to dodge it by saying they're worried about an ayin hara. The Pelayoyit says that when you give tzedakah and you call out a big amount, we made an appeal for Atzala of Central Jersey, and people call out uh, 20 times high, $360, right? 30 times high, $540, right? That's, you don't have to be worried about ayin, ayin hara because, because you call out other other people will call out. That's the way. That's the way it works. When 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 you call out, when you call out, then other people call out, and uh, and 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 it causes more. That that's mitzvah Hashem bara meira seinoyim. I want to add. There is no reason why some of us should not avail ourselves, at least occasionally, after we daven in our regular minyanim, to go to a Svardi minyan and to hear Berchus Ganim. Now that we see how, you know, we Litvisha, we Ashkenazic Jews, will not have Berchus Ganim again till Sukkot. That's a long time to wait for this. If you go into a Svardi shul, now I was invited by Mr. and Mrs. Batesh. I was a scholar in residence uh, by a Svardi shul in Borough Park. And they took him on a Shabbos. I was so excited in the middle of the, the, middle of the year to hear Duchening. Wow! Oh, so then here comes the next question. And this begs, it's really, it begs for an answer. If you're telling me that the brach is anyway coming from Hashem, vani avarechem, then why do we have the kahanim do it? We should gather for a moment of silence and receive the Rabbi Nishalom's blessings. We should have a moment of silence, maybe ten, ten moments of silence, and, 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 and receive, receive, receive Hashem's blessing. 
So, <clears throat> this is a big kasha, and the Rav Oshim Mistolen, the great Admir Mistolen, Zechatzarik the Rachas Chusa Yagen Aleinu, Stolen a Rebbe. He says an interesting thing. You know, before I tell you his answer, I'll tell you another story. I'll tell you a story. There was once a group of Hasidim, and the Rebbe passed away. And after the Rebbe passed away, they thought that they would, a lot of their problems would stop. Because it says, G'dayla tzadikim b'misasan yoyisim echayim. That a tzadik is even greater after he dies than when he's alive. So they were expecting big Yeshua's from the Rebbe. And he came to one of them in a dream. And he said, no, that I can't help you because when I was in this world, I prayed for your requests. But now I'm in the next world, I see that it's really good for you. What you think is no good is really good for you. So Rabbi Ashim is stolen. He says an interesting thing. It's such an interesting thing. We're going to talk soon about the fact that Yivarecha Hashem V'Yishmarecha is a bracha for money. That the Yivarecha Hashem Rashi says, Mama mine. Says Rabbi Hashem is stolen. If Hashem would give the brachas, since he sees the future, he knows the challenges that we have with money and all these things. He's not going to easily give a brach of money. Therefore, it comes from the Kahanim. They don't see the future. So they could say, That's what Rav Asher Mistolin says. There's a Rabbeinu Bachya. Rabbeinu Bachya says, Koi is Bigmatria 25. Koi is 25. Because he says there's 24 matnas kuna. That's what the, uh, the Gemara tells us, that the Kahanim get 24 gifts. They get the truma, they get the bikurim, they get, they get 24 gifts. They get the reisha sagez, they get the zrayal chayayim vakeva, they get, they get a lot of gifts. And birches Kahanim is the t- 25th gift. So the question is, that's very difficult to understand, the Birchus Kahanim is not a gift to the Kahanim. Uh, uh, Birchus Kahanim is a gift from the Kahanim to us, not the other way around. So what does it mean? So says, says the, uh, says, says the Chassam Seifer, it says, Vani Avorechein, there's one Pshat and Rashi, Vani Avorechein means, and I will bless the Kahanim for blessing you. Now, I will bless the Kahanim for blessing you, but, okay, that's coming from Hashem, so why is it considered a gift from us? The answer is because we have to ask them for the blessing. You know, it says in the Pasuk, Amor Lahem. Now, most people translate Amor Lahem, that you should bless the Bnei Yisrael, saying to them, but if you look in the Targum Unkelis, Kaisavochu es Bnei Yisrael, Amor Lahem, that we should ask for a ble- blessing. That's why, what do we do before we say Birchus Kahanim? What do we do before the Kahanim say Birchus Kahanim? The Chazan says, Kayanim! Because we're supposed to ask them to bless us. As a matter of fact, it's my minig always that. If I have one kayin, so there's three different opinions if you have one kayin. One opinion is, is that the kahanim should do him without saying anything. You can't say kahanim because there's only one kayin. That's one opinion. There is another opinion to say kohen. But it's my meaning always that I, I have the chazen say quietly what we say every day. Alekeinu v'lekeinu, barcheinu babracha hamishleshes, 
Baterak, Silva, Yedei Moshe, right? Until he gets up to the word Kehanim, and then say Kehanim. That's what, actually, we did that here in Yom Tov here. Uh, we had only had one Kayan, Rebar and Khan, and that's what I did. I said, but I still said Kehanim because you're supposed to ask them. You're supposed to ask them. Um, and by the way, I just want to point out that um, uh, in that tefillah that we say uh, in 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 uh, in We say alekenu velekav isenu borchenu ba bracha mishleshes batayra. So we're saying clearly, like we've been learning, that the bracha is coming from the rabbi nishalei. Now, when we, when we, uh, when they finally get to blessing us, the first bracha is yevorecha Hashem v'yishmerecha. So Rashi says, Yevarechecha b'mamon. Bless us with money, v'yishmerecha, and protect us. Mm. Protect us from what? So the Medrash says, which is a very easy thing to understand, v'yishmerecha melistim. Protect us from bandits. Protect us from thieves. When a person gets money, then he has to worry about a break-in. When he had an old dilapidated car in front of the house and the paint was peeling, nobody's breaking in. But all of a sudden now he has a late model uh, car in the garage, two of them, and he, he comes out dressed and all, all, everybody's dressed to the nines and so, oh, that's a house that's worthy of a break-in. So you have a Hashem that's a simple shot. The Archaim HaKadosh says that it means Yevorechecha Hashem v'yishmerecha means that Hashem should bless you v'yishmerecha from daigis, from worries. Because it says in Pirkei Yavaz Mar b'nechosim mar b'daiga You have a lot of property, now you have to worry. I know a person that he made a, a lot of money one year and he bought an investment property. He bought an investment property. Now all of a sudden, when it snows, he has to worry that his property, the snow should be cleaned from his property. And there was ice that he didn't clear away, and somebody slipped, and they sued him. There's a famous rav on this Mishnah. Here's a person that he, he has a, a very, very good store for children's clothing. And it's so good, and it's so popular that he decided to franchise it. Now he has a store in Chicago, and a store in California, and a store in Australia, and in London. And he doesn't have a moment's rest. Because they're calling him from London in the middle of the night. And they're calling him from Australia. Right? You know what the Rav calls this? The Rav says, be protected from Pizur HaNefesh. From the fragmentation of the soul. Because all of a sudden you're fragmented. You're fragmented. Big problem. So the Archaim HaKadosh says, Yevarecha Hashem, Hashem should bless you with money, but for Yishmerecha, that it shouldn't cause you worries. Here's a person, he has money, and all of a sudden, he's worried about his taxes. All of a sudden, he's having problems with the IRS. So Yevarecha Hashem, Yishmerecha. Now these, this is the simple pshat. There's another pshat. Yevarecha Hashem, V'yishmerecha, because when a person has money, v'yishman yeshurin v'yivat. 
Yeshurim gets fat and kicks. You see, when a person doesn't have money, then they have to turn to Hashem. Hashem, I need to pay the mortgage. Baruch Aleinu Hashem Alekeinu. If a person doesn't have money, then all of a sudden they're saying till him. But if a person has money and there's money in the bank and there's money on savings and they have nest eggs, who needs God? But should protect you. Should protect you. You shouldn't forget Hashem. There's another pshat. There are people that when they have money, they think that they're better than everybody else. They have money. They have money. So if they have money, so then... If they have money, then they know more than everybody else. This, uh, they're giants of industry. They're people of power. I've seen people, because they had money, they were on the board of directors of schools or shuls, and they wielded their power in terrible ways. A person, Yuvarecha Hashem, person should have atzlach with money, but v'yishmerecha, he should be protected from arrogance, from power. I'll tell you an interesting thing. If you look at Reish Chodesh Benching, in Reish Chodesh Benching we say that we should have chayim uh, shel yira shamayim v'yirashet, a life of fear of heaven and fear of sin. Then we say, Chaim shall oyshir v'chavit, wealth and honor. And then we say again, Chaim shall avas taira v'yirashamayim. So we ask for yirashamayim twice. We said first, Chaim shall yirashamayim v'yirashayim. Then we say, Chaim shall oyshir v'chavit, wealth and honor. And then we say again, Chaim shall avas taira v'yirashamayim. Why are we saying yirashamayim twice? The famous answer is, is because after you get wealth and covet, then you have to ask for yirashamayim again. And if you look, this is known, this answer. But if you look in benching, we do the same thing in benching. And a lot of people never realize this. They bench all their life. In the fourth bracha of benching, in the bracha that was made in Yavna, I, 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 I make this mention in my Safer Power Benching. Our benching, Baruch Hashem, is, is my most popular sefer. I have copies of that too, only soft cover now. But again, if you want a copy of that, you could order that for me also. 718-916-3100. Um, but if you look in benching, we ask Hashem, L'chein, L'chesed, L'rachmim, L'revach, Hatzal, V'atzlacha, Baruch of Yeshua, Parnasa, V'chalkala, V'rachamim, V'chaim, V'shalom. L'chol toy. Do you see that we said the word Rachamim twice? And if you mention, they never noticed that. You say the word Rachamim twice. Again, let me repeat that to you. L'chein l'chesed Rachamim. V'revach ha'tzolav ha'tzolach ha'brach v'yeshu ha'nechama parnasa. V'rachamim v'chayim v'shalom. We say Rachamim twice. And the answer is, is after we say parnasa v'chalkala, we need to ask for Rachamim again. That's why every word that denotes money has a danger side. Mammon is the same letters as mumon, a blemish. Kesef, silver, is the same letters as kisufa, shame. Zav, gold, is the same letter as biza, disgrace. Matbeya, coin, is tava, to drown. Domim is blood. Because money is, could be very dangerous. It could cause people to be corrupted. And that leads us to the next bracha. Yo'er Hashem ponov lecha. May Hashem shine His countenance upon you. V'chunecha. And give you grace. Says the Chsam Seifer. A lot of times if a person is wealthy, many people are jealous and envious. 
So we ask Hashem, even when we have money, v'chuneka, we should find favor in people's eyes. We should know that this tremendous power in, in, uh, of protection in Birchus Kahanim. It's interesting that Rav Isaac Sher, this is brought down, Rav Isaac Sher, in the month of Eir, I think it was the 15th of Eir, when he was in Eretz Yisrael, it was during 1948, the War of Independence, they were in the base Medrash and bombs were falling. And he gave a shmuz and he said the best miklat shelter is the yeshiva. And then he said one of the greatest protections is Birchus Khan. It says he named Mitasa Yishol Shmaima Shishim Gibayrim Savivla. Sixty Mighty people are around it. If you look at the Targum Yonason on that Pasuk, Shishim Gibarim, he says it refers to the 60 letters. We said it's 15 words. The 60 letters of Birchus Kanem. Isn't that something? And then it says, Yisa Hashem Pono Ve'lecha May Hashem uh, uh, lift His countenance to you the Yasem Lecha Shalom and give to you peace. Ask Stich Sam Seifer. Peace is between two people or between two groups. So why does it say the Yasem Lecha Shalom? It should say the Yasem Lochem Shalom. Why does it say Yasem? It's such a basic question. Why does it say? Okay, so. That is one answer. That, that's my mahalach. I, I, I'm not going to say my, my, it's only because it was brought up. But the Yasem L'chosh Shalom certainly r- refers to that you should have peace of mind. There's no question about that. That's why we say, I mean, I'm saying no question, but that's what I think. That that's what we say if you want to wish somebody something that encompasses everything. Wish them that they should have menuchas hanefesh. Ah, menuchas hanefesh. That encompasses everything. No worries. Menuchas hanefesh. That's peace of mind. And we should certainly have that in mind when we daven in Sim Shalom and Shalom Rav and Ashkiveinu Hashem Alekeinu L'Shalom. A person should lie down in bed with peace of mind. That means no worries about health, no worries about money, no worries about enemies, no worries about fighting. It's a tremendous thing. But the Chassam Seifer, who's a lot smarter than me, has a little bit of a different spin on the Yasem L'Chashalm. It's not far from this. But the Chassam Seifer says that there's a famous medrash. The medrash says that the malachim asked, in the Torah you say, Asher lo yisaponim, that you will not show favor. And yet you say, Yisa Hashem ponavilecha. So he said, Shall I not show favor? I said, that you should eat and be full and bench. And yet they are machmer and they bench even after just a kazayas even after just an olive-sized piece of food. And the idea, says the Chassam Seifer, is that the bracha of Yosem L'choshalayim is that you should feel whole. You should be satisfied with what you have. Shalom means shleimus. You should be satisfied with what you have. This is what we ask Hashem always in davening on Yom Tov. Sabeinu mituvecha, satisfy us from your good. This is what Yaakov Avinu said to Esav, Ochi yeshli ro, I have everything. He was a Sameach Bechelkai. We say this every day in our brachas when we say, Hashem She'osa Li Kol Tzarki. It's only in retrospect. That's why we say it in past tense. But I see I had everything I needed. I made it. She'osa Li Kol Tzarki. I have everything that I need. That's the bracha of Yosem L'chashon. Many of my Talmidim heard this from me, and I, I, I'll say it very quickly. 
Many of my Talmidim heard that that's the song Dayenu. It's really a strange song. If you didn't give us Shabbos Dayenu, if you didn't give us the Torah Dayenu, and we sing it, Day Dayenu, Day Dayenu, Dayenu? Would it be enough without Shabbos? Would it be enough without Torah? But we're teaching our family whatever we have, their correct attitude is Dayena. I shouldn't live to want more. I should be happy with what I have. That's the bracha of the Yosem Lucha Shalom, says the Chesam Sefer. And I'll conclude. Before I do, I want to remind you that if you want to sponsor a share, uh, or we're almost finished, uh, Mesechtis uh, Shvias in the Mishni Yaimis, you could sponsor the next Mishni Yaimis uh, that we're going to do. Uh, or if you uh, want to sponsor, we're almost finished Yavamis. If you want to sponsor Shas Cotton Suvas, uh, you could call me 718 916 3100. 718 916 3100. You could text me or rmmwsi at aol.com. The Mamloyes has an interesting rendition of Yisa Hashem Panavei Lecha V'yaseim Lecha Shama. He says, Yisa Hashem Panavei Lecha, Hashem will cause it, and he dashes Panavei Lecha, that people will look at you, that people won't turn away from you. You know, sometimes somebody doesn't get along with you, they don't even look at you. This is the greatest blessing. It's why Shman Esrei ends with the bracha of Mavarech Hasamo Yisrael B'Shalom. It's why Benching ends Hashem Yavarech Hasamo Yisrael It's why Shas ends with the subject of Shalom in Mesech Des Uktzen. And it's why Berchus Kahanim ends with Shalom. As, the, as the Rashi tells us in Bechuk Kaisai, Shalom is equal to every. Everything. That's why we say Oisa Shalom Ovari Asakal and Imein Shalom Ein Klum. In the source of our learning, we should all be blessed with Shalom. Have a very good night and a very good Shabbos.